before this video, I'm in a place which is known for its free seas, cuisine, culture and Covid. Indeed, this won't be about pasta, prosecco and paintings, but more about pandemics and precautions. In this Italian job, I will be venturing to towns along the eastern side of the peninsula, heading down south before going back up north to Venice. But first... I've come here to a country that's all about the high rise, San Marino. In the shadow of Mount Titano, this landmark country, third smallest in Europe, has a population figure lower than the number of coronavirus casualties in the UK. If 2020 was not torture enough, this little museum has a few more of them. If you've ever been to the Italian Tower of Spain, what is in here won't be a main surprise. So we what can one get in this house of pain? Sitting people down in visitor of chairs, splitting knees, making a laugh with branding instruments like these ones here. How about this Iron Maiden? introduced as part of a special tier of local lockdown measures. Or these spiky instruments designed to promote social distancing. And even a mask to stop the spread of the virus. So that is hands, face and space covered. The museum also has a garrote, last used in 1974 by Spain as a means of death penalty. and instruments for those that like to swing a few balls, whip people into line, or enjoy a good squeeze with this corset. Don't forget some facial features too. Swipe There is also a dungeon below, complete with a skeleton to keep your company. Exit is via a side door into a world where, for some, wearing masks is modern day torture. In the centre of the city of San Marino is the Piazza della Liberta and the Palazzo Pubblico. The public palace acts as the town hall of the city as well as government building. It also houses the Grand and the General Council. Located on a Domus Communis Magna, the current building was completed in the late 19th century and renovated on 30th November 1996. Above the three Gothic arches are battlements and gold bells, above which a bell tower bears images of St. Agatha, St. Marino and St. Leno above the clock. In the centre of the piazza is a Statue della Liberta, made from white Carrara marble and symbolising freedom in the form of a female warrior. The city of San Marino is one of nine Castelli. Due to the steepness of the location, it is beyond the reach of the Superstrada. Barring a few roads, accessibility is mainly on foot through winding, narrow passageways. A hot summer's day like this allows the architecture of the buildings to really show off the rugged charm of the stonework and foliage decoration. En route up is the Basilica di San Marino. It is built in a neoclassical style and dedicated to St. Marinus, founder of this country. In a country of low taxes and foreign investment, the local economy relies plentifully on tourism, banking and manufacture of goods and like wine, stamps and ceramics. Along the stretch of narrow passageways are tiny outlets selling touristy goods like clothing, jewellery and its distinct ceramics like jars and vases. Or pertinently, shops now tell you si plega indossare mascherina. Contributing to the rather relaxed feel of the place are the copious amounts of open air restaurants offering pizza and pasta dishes and a great place to eat out to help out San Marinese style.
The winding path leads up to the Gaeta, otherwise known as Prima Torre or La Rocca. It is one of three towers in San Marino, connected by a wall pass and features in the state's flag. Known to be in existence since 1253, it has undergone a few reconstructions, including the addition of its outer walls, belfry, and chapel. It has served as several functions such as watchtower, fortress, and prison. Venturing across the outer walls provides the opportunity to capture remarkable views of the countryside around. There are towers on the Sesta and the Tale. Ah, so you do for a photo here. Ah, si? Ah, si te. No, io mi faccio. And down there is the Adriatic Sea. Down here is a country that, like San Marino, joined the UK quarantine list in October 2020. Italy! More specifically, I've come to a place famous for Rimini, and it is night time. The Lido seem empty. Rimini is known for being a town of long beaches and for its night scene. But since August 2020, no clubs have been allowed to open. However, it does not stop beachside bars from being open and in business. It's 5am in the morning, which means we can do some beaching and some social distancing as well. Perfect for those wanting to avoid crowds and do moonbathing. However, throughout the night, marshals won't allow you to use the benches. Enjoying a humid subtropical climate, the town's reputation of being a seaside resort first took root in 1843, upon the opening of its first bathing establishment and was rebuilt following the Second World War. As the town wakes up, the beach undergoes some cleaning and the waterfront is used as a place to go jogging. Not just being a place to lay a towel, the town was a key juncture linking the Via Emilia and the Via Fiumina between the north and the south of the peninsula of the Roman Empire. Formerly known as Aramina, it was founded in 268 BC and remnants of the Roman heritage remain in the form of an amphitheatre and its arch. Erected in 27 BC, the arch was dedicated to the Emperor Augustus, welcoming travellers from Rome through the Via Fiumina. Covered in history and stone and decorated with four creepy the gods of Jupiter, Apollo, Neptune, and Roma, it was designed to be an arch so large it cannot be closed by panels. In contrast to the narrow streets are open squares like Piazza Tre Martini, situated on the Roman Forum and named in memory of three partisans who were executed on the 16th of August 1944. Alongside a clock tower, statue of Julius Caesar, and the Tempietto di San Antonio, are outlets and cafes with some piano music. Over down is a Piazza Cavour, an old marketplace with a statue of Pope Paul V in front of a now open Galactic Arts de Rimini and Teatro Amintori Gale. Another Rimini landmark, Ponte di Tiberio. Built of Istrian limestone, it consists of five arches resting on pillars with red water spurs. 
Construction began and Augustus and completed under Tiberius in AD 21. It survived events from floods, earthquakes and conflicts. The bridge features prominently in Rimini's crest. House, home of great archaeological impacts. Social distancing is greatly encouraged on train stations and in trains. It makes fewer seats available for purchase, however. Following a three hour train trip, next stop is Termali, just in time to catch the hunt and Judy puppet show. Or, let me find out what the sky is drawing up. Tem is a resort of popular Italians located in the region of the the region of the 500 million places. The Corso Nazionale leads down to the beachfront and in the Castello Sfera, built in the 8th century and a main feature of the old town. Frankly, is a bit better at smelling sunset, wine, 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 and conversation. It's Friday night in Termini Town, and even though the clubs are shut, the town is still buzzing. It's like Blackpool. They switch the lights on, and it's not Christmas. The night time in Termini has kept going around, and restaurants, bars, and gelaterias. This one serves flavours like lemon, milk, and gelato. I'll have a 99 plate, please. In August 2020, it became mandatory to wear masks after 6 pm. But imagine these scenes in a region under tier 3 classifications. It's a nighttime trade one can only dream of in the UK. It's like 2019. There's a number of charms about this place, like this church, built in the ruins of a temple dedicated to Castor and Pollux, and the ruins and to the beauty of this fishing sea. Even though it's early morning here, without a cloud in the sky, it is still a boiling hot place. Above 20 degrees already, and basically a day to spend at the beach. The beach may not have a unique black status, but the water does have a lovely clarity to it. This hotel has a rather catchy name to it, but it's back on the trains. To here, Ancona, once a maritime republic, it currently serves as a seaport in the March region with links to Croatia and Greece. Suffice to say, not long was spent here, but a quick trip is a trip less. Alongside this marine is a lazaretto of Ancona, or Morley van Vitelliana, completed in 1743 
it was built to quarantine contagion risks before serving as a military fort, sugar refinery and tobacco manufacturing. The arena is used for events and gigs, and yeah, the museum was shut and the courtyard empty. Beyond the Lazarette is the Porta Pia. This Baroque arch was built between 1787 and 1789 and served as a monumental entrance to the town. The cliffside buildings offer a rather photo friendly backdrop and distinctly visible in the background is the cathedral. A small diversion from the main road leads to the Orient Teatro del Nero's neoclassical facade. Apart from the Forza Italia press conference, this part of town is a little quiet. This square, named the Piazza del Pubisito, was named after the November 1860 plebiscite and nicknamed the Piazza del Papa, given the Imperial Statue of Pope Clement VII. Final stop here is the Romanesque Chiesa di Santa Maria della Piazza. Back up north, Venice. A city used to plagues and masks. Founded in the 5th century, it was a major maritime power in the 10th century. The waterborne city was hit by flooding in November 2019, with water reaching 187 centimetres. It would have been hit again in October 2020, but for the intervention of 78 flood barriers. Styled La Serenissima, the city's legacy of maritime commerce, architecture and art have been a magnet attracting somewhere between 25 to 30 million visitors from all over. From a city that suffered from over-tourism, it is welcome to see a bit of legroom across the 118 islands, 150 canals and 400-ish Instagrammable bridges. But even with fewer visitors and outlets closed at this time, the narrow streets and bridges mean maintaining the 2 meter gap is a little tricky. On a summer's night, the lights, bars and restaurants attract the crowds like here in the Piazza San Marco, once said to be the plus elegant San Diego by Napoleon, with a basilica at one end and a museum on the other. And here, the Rialto Bridge, completed in 1591, where two inclined ramps lead up to a central portico. Unlike other bridges elsewhere, there are no railings to leave your lock in. Automobiles are a no-no for the main part of the archipelago, so it's gondolas for 80 euros or a vaporetto for 750, like the one that transports me here to the Lido terminal. I come to the island with the beaches, where tonight there's a bit more of a sedate feel to it. It's probably because everyone's gone. The barrier island once had events purposes, now has hotels, golf courses and the old film festival. Mm, beach is a bit dark, isn't it? That's all for now. Ciao!